Okay, the next tooth we're going to wax are the canines. So, we're gonna start with number six. The maxillary right canine. We have number six right there. We'll put a little bit of uh, separator on. You don't have to do it because uh, I don't want to break your wax. I just do it so it's easier for me to take it off afterwards. Wipe off some of it. Then we'll start the same way we start every tooth. Make a wax coping. Now the maxillary canines are the most robust teeth in the mouth. They are the cornerstones of the mouth. They are considered an anterior tooth. Although it has no incisal edge, it has a single cusp. The labial surface is not flat. It has a very prominent central lobe. Remember, make sure you push this down all the way so that the margin sinks below the gingiva. Now, on this tooth, we make the cusp first. So then we can raise its height to the proper height, which is just about the same length as the central incisors. Second thing we do is the mesial buccal point angle. which is located just below the distal buccal point angle of the lateral incisal incisor the distal point angle matches up with the point angle of the first premolar
as we notice the cusp ridge is going to be a little bit shorter on the mesial and a little bit longer on the distal. Which means that the cusp tip will be shifted slightly towards the mesial. When we look at it from the front, it should just about line up with the central incisors. If not, we'll just remove a little bit, just to make it a tiny bit shorter. Now, on the crown, the area towards the cusp will be wider and then the neck of the tooth will be narrower so as we're making the mesiofacial line angle make a slight S-curve just like we did with the centrals and just like we did with the laterals that's the mesial buckle line angle right there so now I didn't mean to say mesial buckle, I meant to say mesiolabial or mesiofacial. Now we do the distofacial or distolabial line angle. Now this line angle is going to be a slightly more curvy S shape because the distal area needs to be a tiny bit fatter now on the canines the distal area needs to be tucked in Because when we look at it from the front, when we finished with the tooth, we shouldn't be able to see this. Right now we can see it because we didn't put the uh, central lobe in yet, so it's not covering it up. And if you can still see it after the central lobe is placed, then we will need to tuck it in a little bit on the distal. So the next thing we'll do is the height of contour which is on the gingival. Remember not to over contour it otherwise the gingival will be inflamed if this happens to be a crown the contouring should be exactly as far out as the gingiva is it should be no further and it should be also no flatter if it's too flat the food's gonna get impacted into the gingiva and the patient is going to eventually get gingivitis so now we're putting in the central lobe notice the central lobe on the canine is very prominent So 
also make sure that the buckle developmental groove is not so long so we will need to flow that in with some wax This tool will puddle in also, and that will give us a distal developmental depression. I, we like to call it a depression because it's not a groove, it's not an actual line, it's just a dip within the surface of the tooth. After we did this, we're going to start the lingual. And the lingual will start with the marginal ridges, which are also the lingual line angles the marginal ridges on the canine need to be lined up with the marginal ridges on the centrals and the laterals If it kind of sticks on the uh, adjacent tooth, you can use a blade to cut it away to separate it from the lateral incisor. cingulum. As you notice, the cingulum is right there and it has little grooves in it sometimes. It doesn't always have these, but the canine is not like the incisors that it has a concavity. It's actually a little bit more convex. So we can actually put a lingual ridge here since it has these big thick ridges that's why the canine is so strong And what does the canine do? The canine takes all the lateral forces when your jaw moves to the side. It's the major factor in discluding the lower teeth from the upper so that the cusp tips of the upper and lower don't collide. Now what kind of forces do anterior teeth take? The anterior teeth take lateral forces. They have one single root so that 
they can resist forces that are lateral or perpendicular to their root. And the anterior teeth help in discluding the posterior teeth. Canines take the brunt of the force, but if you move your jaw forward more, it will start gliding off the incisors, which also help in discluding the posteriors. Now what are the posterior teeth built for? They're built for vertical forces. And they protect the anterior teeth from the vertical forces. Anterior teeth cannot take vertical forces very well, so the posterior teeth are there to protect them. So when you bite straight down on something, they will be protected from the forces that go straight down on the teeth when your molars start grinding grinding up the food oh you see that was stuck together so we better fix that before we cut it so I'm just gonna weld it together like this Okay, so we'll get a blade to cut it This is what's called an interproximal saw. The dentist uses this to cut through composite fillings. So we're just going to cut right through here into proximals. This will aid us in just being able to cut this tooth out. Now we will fix the margins. We'll take the margins down, making sure that it's neat, smooth, and ends right at the margin.
make sure you don't flatten this area out too much we need it to be just right remember if it's too flat it's no good if it's too rounded it's no good So to fix the contact we're just going to add a little bit of wax here and <clears throat> before it hardens too much we're going to push it down in there. So now we have the contact on the mesial and we'll do the contact on the distal Let's melt it a bit put it in push it down see how it squeezes out a little bit there just take the instrument and pick those off now we're going to look at it from the top so, if you see the top, we have this area here that's too far out. See, right here. Gotta make this embrasure a little bit more rounded. even though when we look at it from the front we can barely see the distal portion but we can still see it a little bit see how on this side we don't see it so let's uh, carve this down slightly here and kind of match up the embrasure right here <laughs> and on the mesial side this line angle here is a little too far out so we're gonna take it back a little bit Now that contact area I'm not too crazy about, I think it's a little bit too loose, so we're going to reinforce it with some more wax.